Those bottom fish, I think, are probably perch or something. I can't believe how sluggish they are. They just don't want to. If those tula bees keep coming through. Try to give myself one. See, there's that's probably a tula bee right there. If I can get them to come back and take a look. Some of them just swim through the hole and don't stop and some of them stop and then if you get the ones that stop you pull your bait up above their head and you can tell instantly if they're going to bite or not because they chase right up to it. If you can't catch what you're trying to catch you might as well catch whatever comes through. That one looking at it, if we can. There we go. <laughs> There's something about watching them come up on the screen and then taking it. It's just fun. This one might be just a little bit bigger. Yeah. There you go. How do you like that? That's a nice. It's a pretty fish too. That would make a nice jar of pickled fish. In my particular case, it's going to be smoked. Smoked tula bee. We're starting to get a little batch here. We've got three. One more on the ice. That'll be just about a batch for the smoker. You can tell that they're down there, but the, that little faint green line that tells you they're off to the side a little. Once it turns red, then you know they're, then you got an actual legitimate customer down there. I'm gonna come up a little higher. And come on. I've got that spoon down now. And then what you do is you jig it, you just almost like you're lake trout fishing. You just make a lot of noise and a lot of flash. They like, when they see that off from a distance, it looks like they're in feeding. They see the flash and they think it's other tula bees in there that found some little minnows or something to pick on. So what we do is try to attract a bunch of attention with this. And then if I start to see them on the screen again, I can stop and get that little bug with the wax worms down there. They'd rather eat that than the spoon. I'm just trying to make a lot of flash and a lot of vibration in the water. So far I haven't seen anything come swimming in. I'm watching. You can see him looking. He's working his way up. Come on. I've got three or four on there now. And I've got one that... Yep, there he is. Sometimes it just takes a little bit to get them interested. You can tell that they're going to bite though. That's twice I've had to do that. Oh! That one got away on me. <laughs> I got this one coming, and you can see one chasing behind him. There's another one along there too, but he's, he's a day late and a day late. They're getting, they're all kind of nice now. All right, come on, fishy. There we go. I learned after I lost that one to grab the fish. He's looking. There he got it. There we go. One more. And we're going to have a nice batch. We got a complete smoker full. If I get this one in, that'll be all we need. Not a real big one. This one might even make his way into the pickle jar. Well, we had an opportunity come along here today. We were going to try and catch some walleyes. They weren't biting the greatest. Real bright sun. 
deep water, the tula bees started moving in, so we decided to take a chance and, and put enough tula bees. This is plenty. This is going to fill up my smoker completely. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop here. We've got plenty of fish. We're going to take these home, clean them up, and then we'll put together a little segment on how to actually go about smoking them. It's so simple to do, and it comes out so good. They're very, very good eating fish. And it's a fun thing to do when you get into a little jam and you want to catch something else. Or even if you want to make a trip out of it, go just for tula bees. You can do that all winter long. In fact, the best tula bee fishing is still coming later this winter. So we'll get these taken care of, clean them up, and then the next time you see us, uh, we'll show you how to smoke them. I'm Jeff Sundin. We'll be right back.